What's up guys, this is Pink Across. Today I'm going to be talking about how to build great teams in a new metagame. And also at the end of the video, I will be going over what I think are some of the best returning Pokemon and potentially some really good sets to run on them in the Indigo Disc DLC. A lot of the examples from this video are going to be Gen 9 OU related, but a lot of the principles of building in a new metagame are universal. So even if you don't play Gen 9 OU, I'm sure you can get a lot out of the video. If you're enjoying this type of content, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps me out. All right, let's get right into it. We've got four new Pokemon coming in the Indigo Disc DLC. Raging Bolt, Terrapagos, Iron Crown, and Arcaludon. Uh, we don't really know very much about these at the moment. We can only theorize. Probably Raging Bolt, Arcaludon, and Iron Crown are going to be allowed in OU, although likely Iron Crown won't be very good, and Terrapagos being a legendary will probably be banned, but we don't really know. Uh, we also have a lot of returning Pokémon. Uh, Suicune, Kyurem, Superior, Blaziken, there are plenty more, uh, Reuniclus, Swampert, Venusaur, the full list will be linked in the description if you want to check that out, but we have a lot of returning Pokemon, and we also have some new drops. So some familiar faces from previously in this gen, and one new one that we've never seen in OU before, being Darkrai. So that's what's coming into the metagame. It's going to be a major shakeup, and let's talk about what you can do to win in that new metagame. Uh, so the number one thing, experiment at first. I'm Guessing you're probably tempted to make a hyper offense team with an Alolan Ninetales and five new Pokemon. Do it. Have fun. Enjoy the new Pokemon. Make a team that's full of them. Try all the wacky ideas you have. It's really fun to experiment with these new things in a really offensive metagame and just uh, enjoy it for a bit. So immediately, I wouldn't worry about building teams that are viable. Just enjoy it. But after, once you are ready to, it really helps to steal ideas. So as you're going and just enjoying using uh, whatever whatever Pokemon you're excited that arrived, uh, you may see some things that seem really broken to you. And you can say, oh, wow, okay, I really want to use that. You know, there's no, uh, you, team building is not the kind of thing where once somebody builds it, it's bad to take their idea. It, it is a community in which you are encouraged to see things on ladder, use them yourself, and spread what is good, because that's what's going to make the metagame advance. Uh, now, if you do use something very specific that somebody else was using, or very odd, it wouldn't hurt to credit them, but really, if you see something on the ladder that you think is cool, just go for it, use it yourself, and this will also help you get an idea of what's good in the metagame. So by experimenting with these new Pokémon yourself, and taking some ideas from people you see on ladder, you can really get a better idea of what is going to be good, and what isn't as good as you thought of the new returning Pokémon. Note the playstyle viability shifts. So every time there's a new metagame, a lot of extremely powerful offensive threats enter the tier. And what this happens is it polarizes all the viability of playstyle. So things that are on the opposite ends of the spectrum, being hyper offense and stall or really bulky balance, are going to get a lot better. Whereas everything kind of in the middle offense, bulky offense, and balance are going to get a lot worse. So if you're trying to build a balance team, it's not necessarily unviable and it might work, but it's a lot easier to run things like hyper offense, stall, and fat balance. I would highly recommend using unaware Pokemon during this time. There are a lot of new broken sweepers that people are going to be using, and they will get quick banned or banned eventually, but they won't be right away. And when those are sweeping and people are using a bunch of hyper offense teams, having an unaware Pokemon on your side is a big deal. I would say the best two would be Claude's Ire and Dondozo. Uh, in particular, Dondozo is appealing to me. Stellidurge is a little bit more vulnerable than these other two. Claude's Ire is extremely bulky specially. Dondozo is extremely bulky physically. Whereas Stellidurge is kind of okay on both ends, which makes it a little more susceptible uh, to some of the really powerful breakers and sweepers that are coming. Uh, but still, all of these three are very good tools. For the reasons I just mentioned, you also want to use a lot of priority. There will be a bunch of hyper offense teams running around, people using Nasty Plot Darkrai, Leaf Storm Superior, Dragon Dance, Loaded Dice Curem. It's going to be everywhere, it's going to be chaos. You are not ready for all the sweepers in the tier. There are some that don't even have answers. 
the only way to take them out is by being faster, and that's not always an easy thing to do, especially when you've got extremely fast things like Darkrai that are going to be in the tier, so I would recommend priority. In particular, these are the big three, by far the most powerful priority that's really viable and easy to fit onto teams. I would say Rillaboom and Dragonite should be your top two here. King Gambit is good, but I think a lot of new sweepers are going to be aware of King Gambit and be running Substitute to try to avoid Sucker Punch. Number six, you guys really should be using Ditto and Cinderace. Now, not on every team, but these are going to be really, really great in the new metagame. Ditto, you can probably guess, uh, with Choice Scarf and Imposter, its hidden ability, Ditto can come in and copy the stat changes of a target, and with Choice Scarf, it can outspeed. Meaning, if you've got something that's dragon dancing in your face, or nasty plotting up, you can go into it with Ditto after that uh, threatening sweeper gets a kill race all their stat boosts, outspeed them, and steal their sweep. So something to note about Terra mechanics, Ditto will not trace their Terra. So if your opponent has a Roaring Moon that's used Dragon Dance and it uh, Terra flies, you will not be able to get that Terra flying when you come in. You will still be a Dark and Dragon type. Something else to note is that Ditto will take stat changes but not ability specific ones, so Protosynthesis boosts will not be copied by Ditto. Right. Another thing about Terra, if Ditto uses Terra, it will always be that type, no matter what the opponent that you trace is. This can be helpful. I would recommend, if you're going to be taking on sweepers, making your Ditto some Terra type that's going to resist common priority. Maybe Steel, in particular, would be a good option if you want to resist both Extreme Speed and Grassy Glide. Now, Cinderace is really good, too, because it can make it so that you don't have to deal with hazards so much. It's going to be a very fast-paced metagame, so probably your opponent won't have time to hazard stack on your team, so Cinderace can act as almost really solid removal. And the other big deal is that a lot of screens and Aurora Veil vale teams will be used during this time. Hyper Offense will be by far the most common playstyle, so having Cinderace and being able to reverse those screens is going to be extremely valuable. So these two are going to be a lot better than you're used to, and I would highly recommend using them on your teams. Something else that's really important is that you should use top tiers from the previous metagame. I see a lot of times when a new DLC comes out, people are using teams that are just full of new Pokemon, and they seem to forget about the old threats. Gliscor is still going to be broken, Great Tusk is still going to be broken, King Gambit's still going to be broken. They're going to be amazing, they're going to be incredible support, uh, and they're going to make your teams a lot better to use. None of this is going to change. Uh, the fact that there are a lot of fun new sweepers in the tier is very entertaining, and it's going to change the metagame a lot, but it will not change how good these three and a lot of other current top metagame threats are. So if you're building a team and noticing you're only using new Pokemon, you're probably not building optimally. Now, if you're building like that for fun or to try things out, that's fine, but once you're ready to try to make a team that's going to succeed, you shouldn't be having a team full of new Pokemon. You should be utilizing some of the old threats. And what that team's going to look like is going to have some new Pokemon, because these are going to be very strong. The ones that emerge, uh, the new Pokemon that are going to be common and seen on teams, are the ones that are going to rule the meta until they either get banned or just settle into a high place in the viability. And it is good to use those. If you are not utilizing new Pokemon, you're missing out on a major part of this new metagame. But I would say you definitely still want some of the old ones too. So your team should have a mix. And if you do have a mix, probably a little more biased toward the side of the old Pokemon, you probably are building in a balanced and beneficial way. And you're on your way to success. Now, let's talk about some of the returning things, what sets I think they're going to use. Starting off with Darkrai, uh, the item would be a lot of things. My guess would be Heavy Duty Boots is going to be the main one. Uh, at first, I could see definitely Bad Dreams its only ability. Uh, heavy Duty Boots, you could run Life Orb on this. You could run something like Black Glasses if you wanted to boost up your Dark Pulse. Doesn't really matter. You could even run Wide Lens to boost accuracy. You'll see why soon. And I would say the main set for this is going to be Nasty Plot. Uh, Dark Pulse, Hypnosis, and some kind of filler move. So this could be Sludge Bomb to hit fairies, could be Focus Blast, uh, could be Terra Blast with uh, Terra Fairy. That's going to be very good as well. And just a maximum speed set. So this is going to outspeed Meowskarada, it's going to outspeed Rabombi. This is one of the fastest things in the metagame, and it's going to be insane. 
this is the dark rice that i would recommend choice specs is definitely going to be usable as well i would say choice scarf is not worth using uh, but this i think will be extremely threatening especially with bad dreams so that's going to hurt foes one eighth of their health per turn so you are not going to hit this hypnosis all the time but if you do there is nothing in the entire game that's going to be an answer to this dark ride Gliscor, you know what it does. Poison Heal, it's going to use Spikes, Protect, Earthquake, and uh, U-Turn, probably. And it's going to be very good at that. Uh, maybe Terra Water, doesn't really matter. Max Physical Defense, this is what Gliscor does. It's what it will always do. Uh, the one thing I would be aware of is that a lot of things may be running Substitute, so your Gliscor could be set up fodder to some of the sweepers in the metagame. Uh, and it might get overwhelmed a little bit, but it will still be a very strong Pokemon right away. Roaring Moon is back. It's definitely going to be running booster energy as it always does. Probably Dragon Dance knockoff, Acrobatics, and Earthquake. Uh, nothing too revolutionary there. Terra Flying for sure. Now one option you could run, you could go Adamant or Jolly on this, is a running Substitute over Earthquake. So this is going to, although you lose a way to hit King Gambit, uh, you also do have a way to avoid its Sucker Punch. And you can also set up for free on Gliscor using Substitute. So this would be my personal favorite. Uh, we go into Volcarona. This thing can run so many sets. It's definitely going to want Heavy Duty Boots. Uh, but you could also, if you have a team with a Cinderace, maybe run Leftovers or something else. Uh, my personal favorite set, although you do need a team that can support it, as I said, is uh, running this. You run Sub, Quiver Dance, Terra Blast, and Flamethrower. Uh, you can also run Fiery Dance if you prefer. And on this, I go Terra Ground. So let's let's go Fiery Dance. I think that's a little better. And this is extremely threatening. There's almost nothing on the tier that can take this on. And with Substitute, you've got a way to scout uh, King Gambit Sucker Punch as well. Uh, this can be really, really threatening. Venusaur is back. And I think it's basically going to be used only on Sun Teams, but I'm still looking forward to that. Growth, Weather Ball, Sludge Bomb, and for this last, probably Giga Drain. Now, you may notice this doesn't really hit Heatran very well. Uh, so one option you could go is Earth Power and use Terra Fire to get that extremely powerful Weather Ball. And you can run Modest, but probably you want to outspeed Iron Valiant in the Sun, so you can go Timid on that. And I would only run this on Sun teams. Uh, Skarmory, I don't think, is going to be seeing very much usage. It is it is kind of like a Corviknight that can set Spikes, but also, it doesn't have U-Turn. Uh, but probably on this, you're just going to see Body Press, Iron Defense, Roost, and Spikes. It lost Toxic. It's very unlikely it's going to get that back. Uh, so probably this is going to be the set that you'll see is most common. Uh, if you really, your team doesn't care about pivoting and you just need something that kind of takes the role of Corviknight, but you also want a Spike Setter, uh, this could be a good addition. Suicune, I don't think... Oh, I forgot the Terra type here. Uh, Skarmory... Probably the Terra type would be Dragon, just to deal with Ogre Pond Wellspring a little better. Skarmory, I mean, Suicune is going to do what it has always done. I think Sub, Palm Mind, Protect, and Scald. The one really nice thing about this is that it can do a decent job of even potentially stalling out Curem. Uh, if you were really scared of Curem, you've got a few options. So you could really run Terra Ice if you wanted to turn this into a Curem answer. Uh, you could run Terra Steel, it was a good one. Uh, to resist a lot of the, you know, the grass hits and be neutral toward electric. Uh, but overall, I don't think Suicune will be seen too much. It's, it is fairly weak to Encore and doesn't really have a way to hit Ogre Pond Wellspring, which is a little rough. Uh, so something else you could run is a little bit more of an offensive variant where instead of Protect, you run something with Terra Blast, like uh, Terra Blast Electric, uh, and that could be, that could be interesting as well. I wouldn't recommend Suicune too much in the early metagame. Uh, I, I don't think it'll be terrible, but it, it's just a little slow-paced and unreliable, and uh, there will be a lot of really fast, intense breakers around. Speaking of which, let's talk about Blaziken. I think this thing will be great paired with Rillaboom, Leftovers with Speed Boost, uh, Swords Dance, Protect, Flare Blitz, and High Jump Kick or Close Combat. This is not the most creative set. It's nothing new, but I think it's extremely, extremely effective. In particular, paired with Rillaboom. And honestly, I would be inclined. You could run Terra Fighting here, or Terra Fire for the extra power. Uh, and I could see that argument. But a defensive Terra type could be really nice on this as well. As something to help resist extreme speed. Because what's really nice about Blaziken, 
at the moment, it resists Grafty Glide and Sucker Punch. That's that's amazing for it to have that. Uh, but I would say what's really nice is you could run Terra Steel to maintain your Grassy Glide uh, resistance, deal with extreme speed better, and you can take Toxic from things, which is really nice. Imagine you are in grassy terrain and a Gliscor comes in. You can Terra Steel take Earthquake like it's nothing, Swords Dance Up, and be immune to Toxic. That's an amazing situation. So I would run this Blaziken, and I would run it on Grassy Terrain. Now we've got Latios and Latias. I don't think these are going to be very good. Uh, a lot of people, I know in previous generations, they ruled the tier, but I'm not. I don't have a lot of hope. Uh, you could run... Now, yeah, Latios does have very good coverage, so you could run something like Aura Sphere, you know, Draco Meteor, Psy Shock and maybe Roots just to maintain your health, or Mystical Fire. And uh, you could power this up with something like Terra Dragon or Terra Fighting. But really, I don't think this will be a very good set. Uh, you could run it, but I'm not a fan of Latios in general. I don't think it's strong. I don't think Latias will be great either, but I did see uh, an interesting set that some were running with Agility, Calm Mind, Stored Power, and Terra Blast uh, with a Terra Blast Fighting. Uh, this is a decent idea. I, I could see the vision. It's a little bit better than uh, Galarian Articuno, which is currently trying to do this. Just has a, a few more immunities uh, and overall a little bit stronger in this role. Uh, probably on this, you would want to go maybe not max defense, but maybe maybe max HP, max special attack. Um, probably the goal here is just to set up as much as you can and get stored power off. I don't think this will be particularly strong. I would advise against using this. I think there are much better things you can run on a hyper offense team, uh, but it wouldn't be terrible either. Superior, I'm expecting to be a big metagame force. I'm really excited for this guy. Leftovers would probably be the best item. Definitely want to go contrary. Leaf Storm. Uh, you could run Taunts, Leech Seed. There are a lot of different sets you could run, but I would say Sub Glare is going to be the best. So there are a lot of things you could mess around with. If you want to beat Blissey and Claude's Ire, Taunt could be cool. Uh, but as the last, I would say this is going to be the standard set, is Sub, Glare, Leaf Storm, and Terra Blast. So I know this is a little bit Terra reliant, but I think Superior is an incredibly strong Terra abuser. Great speed here as tier as well. And uh, I would say for the Terra type, there will be a few main common ones. So you'll have Ground. Uh, ground is appealing because it can hit Heatran, King Gambit, and Guldango. Now, the other one is Fire. This misses out on Heatran, but it hits Corviknight, which the um, Leaf and, sorry, Grass and Ground coverage does not. Uh, you could go Terra Water as well as kind of a general catch-all, but it's not particularly strong. You could go Fairy if you wanted to hit Dragon types and be a little more resistant to Pult. But overall, I would say what's going to be best is probably Terra Fire. That's the one I would have the most hope in and use the most consistently. And if you want it to be a bit more consistent, you can structure your team in a way that punishes Heatran. Reuniclus, I love this guy. I think he's going to be a lot of fun. In the early metagame, I don't anticipate Reuniclus doing much. Uh, Assault Vest sets with Regenerator could be pretty nice. Uh, really, really nice special wall, actually, especially with... Um, Psy Shock gets moves like Psy Shock, Future Sight, and hopefully gets knockoff back. Uh, you know, it gets Focus Blast. So there are a lot of really good moves, uh, a lot of good utility here, and it can switch in on Curem. That's what it was known for last generation, and Curem will certainly be a big threat to the tier with Choice Specs and uh, some other sets. But this is not bad. It can deal with Iron Moth, it can deal with special variants of Iron Valiant. Uh, can even switch in and scout things on a Dragapult pretty easily. Uh, the other main set is going to be Magic Guard. I'm looking forward to that one as well. Uh, you'll definitely want to run Calm Mind, Recover, Psy Shock. Uh, you could, there are other options. You could run Psychic, you could run Stored Power. For the last, probably Focus Blast, but really where the strength here comes in is the Terra type. Uh, Reuniclus being able to get out of Mono Psychic could be really nice. I would say the main one you're probably going to see is Terra Water. Uh, but there are other possibilities as well. But Terra Water just seems like really nice. You can just get out of a ton of weaknesses and not have very many to deal with. And as usual, Reuniclus usually wants to run enough speed to reliably outspeed Tox effects, and they put the rest in physical defense. Although, with how common Tox effects is, you could probably forget about the speed and just go max defense these days.
think Curem is going to be an absolute monster. Choice specs will definitely be popular. Uh, really good coverage here with Ice Beam, Blizzard if it's paired with Alola Ninetales or Chili Reception users, Earth Power, Draco Meteor, a lot of, lot of good moves you could run here. Uh, another set I could definitely see is uh, Leftovers with Substitute, so Sub Roost, uh, Freeze Dry, and Earth Power is really threatening. Almost nothing in the tier can take that on. So really, you'll probably have to have a specially defensive Terra Ice Pokemon on your team if you want to deal with this Kyurem set. Uh, another one is actually Dragon Dance. So Kyurem does have Icicle Spear. Um, and it now has the option to run Loaded Dice, which makes that even more threatening. So you could run Mono Ice Attack. Uh, Kyurem may get Earthquake this gen, but probably not. Sometimes you can run Iron Head with uh, Terra Steel here uh, to threaten a lot of the Fairy types. You could run uh, whatever Terra type you think might be helpful. You could run Electric with Terra Blast Electric here for Bolt Beam coverage. But overall, this could be a very, very threatening set with the incredible bulk that Kyurem has. And uh, it's not it doesn't have a lot of difficulty setting up uh, just because of how insanely bulky it is. And lastly, let's talk about Smeargle. Uh, this guy will do what it's always done, probably be a lead. You could run some other cheesy nonsense with it, but I'm expecting, for the most part, you're probably going to just be running Sash leads. And getting every move is incredible. I mean, you could run Nuzzle, you could run Spore, but it will almost always be running Sticky Web, one of the best entry hazards in the game. Uh, probably... After that, I would imagine Stealth Rock, Nuzzle, and Final Gambit to take itself out. Maybe you want to run Explosion, uh, whatever you think would be better here. Other thing you could run is Taunt to try to prevent Defog. Uh, it could run Encore to dissuade people from using Defog. But Smeargle will do much what it has always done, be a hazard lead. As for the Terra type, I think probably the most common one you're going to see would be something that can prevent the most common double hit moves. In this case, I would think of Dragapult Darts, and that's why I would go Terra Fairy. But Smeargle will do what it has always done. Well, I'm excited for DLC 2. I hope you guys are as well, and uh, I can't wait to try this metagame out and uh, have fun with it. If you guys enjoyed, please remember to leave a like and subscribe, and I'm still offering one-on-one -on -one tutoring, so if you're interested, there will be a link in the description. I'll see you guys next time.